I'm going to be breaking down a little 335 wide or 33 cub defensive ebook for you. And one of the first start out with my Mutt team and just kind of explain why this is kind of valuable because to run this defense the way we're going to be recommending it, it is kind of important to have a couple of cards. If you're playing regs, you can run this defense without the without everything that I'm talking about. I would just advise using either the Chiefs or the Bills because they're the best teams in regs, in my opinion. But for that, for that, let's go ahead and get into the roster setup and construction here. And basically what we've got, I think the must-have cards for this scheme is Darrell Rivas, Asante Samuel, and then at the slot corner position we have uh, Traverius Ward. Now, if we just dive in here real quick to the abilities for these players, the main thing is that they have bottleneck, and then they also have universal coverage or reinforcement, which allows them to get all the KO abilities, one step ahead, which is going to allow them to negate route running abilities, and then they have pick artists as well. So these abilities all work together for the man coverage to be as sticky as it's going to be. This is going to be a man-to-man -man based scheme. And then uh, Asante Samuel also has bottleneck built in, pick artist, and then he has reinforcement, which is uh, actually even just a little bit better than universal coverage because he will d defeat uh, run blocks as well. But the one step pick artist and bottleneck is important. I don't really care if they're 99 speed, to be honest. Uh, at this point in the year, I'm still rocking the 70 out of 70 Super Bowl theme team, uh, mainly just because it's so hard to keep up with how fast the, the theme teams switch, and, and I just don't have time to do that. So. Uh, Traverius Ward here, charge up universal coverage. And then, uh, as you can see, what's interesting about this card is I'm doing the charge up on him for universal coverage. You don't have to do that because he does get every man KO. The reason I'm doing that is just so that if he does light up, then I can have the full capabilities of a zone coverage defense as well as a man coverage defense. His abilities here, real quick, he gets the bottleneck ability, short route KO, deep route KO, medium route KO, one's in one step ahead. Uh, to me, that's the best way to run him. And those are the main must-have cards. Everything else that I'm going to show you is, is up to you 100%. But I do have the 70 out of 70 Super Bowl theme team. So I think Cam Chancellor deserves to be played with his dual threat lighted up. This is going to allow him to uh, get all the KOs for both man coverage and zone coverage. If you're not able to do prelits, you can just get a – any safety that gets deep zone and mid zone, that will be perfectly fine because I'm not going to put my safeties in a ton of coverage. And if they are in coverage, they're going to be covering uh, for just a split second. So that's also why I have Joe Alt here with deep zone KO, mid zone KO, and pick artist. And then at the linebacker position, this is kind of important as well. I do think Chuck Halley makes this scheme a lot better, but any linebacker that has medium route knockout or deep route KO or inside shade will be fine. He has universal coverage lighted up. What that means is he's going to be, just like Cam Chancellor, he's going to get all of the, basically all the KO abilities built into the card. And then I'm trying to think who else plays in this defense. Bo Jackson is actually going to be our user in this defense. So if we go over here to the specialist, you see he's going to be the user. I have secure tackler on him. Honestly, I'm going to probably leave that on just because of the run-heavy scheme right now. But you could – actually, I thought he had KO. Oh, he does right there. You could actually put deep route KO on him, and then you could do the charge up for – or charge up dual threat if you wanted to do that. But in general, I think, you know, this is fine the way I have him. You don't have to have a KO on every single player. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the defensive line. It's not really a big thing here. Um, I am missing one card. I actually need to go grab him. And you know what? Actually, we'll go grab him real quick. Okay, so the main card that I was wanting to add to the squad here is this new Aiden Hutchison card. And the reason why I wanted to have him on the team is primarily just because it's going to help kind of go um, get people away from running their Omaha stuff so they can't see your play art. Now, honestly, I will say I don't know that he has to – I don't know that you even have to necessarily use this, um, but it's going to basically take away prelits on the offensive side of the ball. If we wanted to, you could very easily just use any of like the the pass rush stuff. Uh, but basically, I just put as much pass rush stuff on him as I have. Uh, I don't feel like I really have to have lurk artists. You could, I could 100% see why you would put lurk artists on him. I'm putting as much pass rush stuff as I can, uh, and the reason why is just because. 
This is the, the best way to run the defense that I'm going to show you is really to utilize it as a shed defense. That, to me, is the best method uh, to use it and to mix the blitz in. So with Aiden Hutchison, John Randall, and Micah Parsons, they all have uh, really good pass rushing, like X-Factors, um, and then – or they're like they're not necessarily X-Factors, like kind of built in. Specifically, uh, John Randall and Micah Parsons. Now, if you wanted, if you didn't feel like you needed Aiden Hutchison for the – for the charge up stuff, then what I would tell you to do with your roster is go ahead and grab the Klecko card. I think he's a little cheaper and he has a little bit better uh, stuff when it comes to just true needing a pass rusher. He'd be a better player, but that's it. And then the playbook that I wanted to recommend to you guys for this is going to be the Raiders playbook. And the reason for this is because it has 6 1 and nickel 35 odd so there's a couple other defenses that we know very well and then because this is a primarily going to be a shed defense i like to have the ripper strategy item for the best block shed possible and then we'll get on the practice field and i'll kind of break down the basics of the scheme to set this defense up properly in your coaching adjustments you're going to want to have auto flip defensive play call on auto alignment set to man align option defense on conservative and then my recommendation would be to have all of these zone drops on default and then have your zone coverage set to match for the best capabilities that this scheme is going to allow you to have. Now for your uh, substitutions here, I also recommend go ahead and sub out everybody and then sub them back into their proper places. And I'm gonna show you a really cool package in this defense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sub out these players and sub them back into where we want them for the way that I run this defense. We're going to have um, Aiden Hutchison. He's actually going to be over here on the right side of the screen. John Reno is going to be the nose tackle. And then really either Karloftis or Chase Young, whichever one you would, would rather have there, they can be right there. And then Micah Parsons is going to be on the outside. Remember, he gets that um, unstoppable force, I believe, or dual threat. Chaveris uh, Ward is our slot corner. In this defense, Chuck Howley is going to be this right side linebacker. He's really important to the way the defense is going to work. Bo Jackson is going to be our user. Now, if you wanted to have a taller user here, like let's say you wanted to have Harold, Car Harold Carmichael, go for it. Okay, go for it. doesn't matter to me. I just have Bo Jackson just because he's 99 speed. He's got secure tackle or lurk cards for zero. Okay. Uh, on the outside here, I really do recommend Asante Samuel and Darrell Rivas. The reason I like them over Chavarius Ward is because – we will situationally put these guys in zone coverage, whereas Traverse Ward, the 99% of the time is going to be man coverage across the board. And then, again, like I said, Joe Alt and Cam Chancellor here at the safety positions. Now, I, you don't really need, in my opinion, to set audibles. The only audible that I would recommend setting is just a situational, if you ever wanted to call it, cover four show two. But we're going to be coming out in this Mike Blitz zero every single time, and then pretty much everything else is set. Now, the package that you want to utilize is going to be, uh, if you see here, if you look at the screen, you see that little packages button at the bottom. By flicking the right joystick to the right or to the left, you can change the packages, which is going to change the adjustments. So if we click one click to the left, you'll see it, it's on this free safety one inside. This is going to give us a different adjustments that are a little bit more effective for the way we're going to be utilizing this defense. Okay, so we're going to be coming out in Mike Blitz Zero every single time as our base play, and we're going to be making the majority of our adjustments from this look. And I want to also, real quick in this kind of beginner piece of this, I did want to explain how the Blitz works from this formation, in my opinion, how it works the best from this formation, so that you can use it kind of systematically, because we are, we are trying to use the Blitz for a specific purpose. When you're playing defense, you always want your plays to look the same, which we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And also, ideally, you want to be calling your blitzes purposefully, not just blitzing to blitz, but blitzing because it's going to solve a certain problem that you have or create a problem for the offense. So the first way that we're going to do is we're going to talk about just the basics of the blitz and how it works and why it is so effective. So the easiest way to set this blitz up, in my opinion, is to shift your defensive line to the left, crash your defensive line out, and then you're going to stand about right here with your user, as you can see right here. Now, you can stand on the running back side, and I'll go over that in a minute, but I just want to show this basic five-man version, and as you see, we're able to get pressure off of the edge. Now, there are some other additional things that we can do 
that can make this blitz really good, even from a four-man uh, position. So what we're going to do is we're going to press. Now notice when I press, as you can see here, the safeties on the back end of the defense are at about a nine-yard depth. If I was to audible to cover four show two, I want you to watch what the defense does. See how they move back. And number one, it's a dead giveaway that I audibled. And then number two, when I press them, they actually did go down to about nine yard depth. Normally they don't. Let me try to go to a Tampa two and see if they still come down. Okay, I guess they do. So you always want to come out of Mike Blitz zero and then you audible. Now, one of the other things is if you look at this, uh, look at the corner on the left side. Notice how this corner on the left side, these are some little bitty things, but they're super important. The corner on the left side, even though in my auto alignment I have it set to man align, the cornerback on the left side of the screen is inside. When I audible to cover four show two and I repress, you see that he is now lined up to the outside. Again, another dead giveaway. For that purpose, when I run this defense, I am in Mike Blitz zero 99.9% .9 of the game. If you want to run out of Tampa two and run more of a zone base, that's fine. The key is you want your defenses to look the same, okay? Now, this is also why when I run this, I typically am going to shift my defensive line uh, to the left every single time, and then I'm going to stand basically behind the – on the running back side. So you see here, now we get this blitz. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit better. Now, one of the other things that you can do with this defense is you can send four. Now – that kind of goes into one of the patches with 3-3 Cub that we do need to talk about and why this is important. So the, with the latest patch of, of Madden back, I think in like late October, they removed the ability to audible down from nickel 3-3 to nickel 3-3 Cub. What that also did was it changed the formation. This is really not a three-down lineman formation. It's really a four-down lineman because if I crash my defensive line to the left, you see that blitz angle on the left side. Now if I crash them to the right, you see how it's changing that left side linebacker, which is what they would want you to categorize him, but the game categorizes him as a defensive end. It also does this out of 3-4 odd and other defenses as well. So our, our guy on the left here is a defensive end in the formation. Our guy on the right is a linebacker. The reason this matters is because if I try to man up my defensive end, notice that I can only man him up to the, line, to the running back or the tight end. Now, this is a little bit advantageous, and the reason why it's advantageous is I wanna show you what happens if I flip the formation. If I was to flip this formation here, notice that the linebacker on the right side of the screen, I can man him up on the outside player, but I cannot man up that right of screen linebacker onto the tight end. I can only man up the defensive end, okay? So that's something just really important to kind of note. One of the real advantages of this is you can take this defensive end and you can actually cross man that that um, you know got that um, drawn a blank here that that uh, tight end. So I also talked a little bit briefly about the potential to get a four man rush. So the way that you're going to get a four man blitz is you're going to really try to overload this left side. In Madden 24, the weaker side of the offensive line. If you look at any meta blitz, whether it's six one, whether it's dollar, whether it's three three, whether it's three three cub. They're all exploiting the left side of the line of scrimmage. So what I like to do is I like to always shift to the left side. And the reason is because I'm really trying to exploit that left side of the line of scrimmage. And by standing right here, you'll see this four-man rush can come completely free. Now, in practice mode, the four-man blitz is not as good as it is in ultimate team, like in game mode. And you can stand on either side. You don't have to be on the left or the right uh, to me, for either, you, you're fine. Your biggest job in terms of your user lurk and how you want how you want to kind of swerve uh, to make this blitz, I like to hold left trigger before the ball snapped, and I'm just going to kind of flow to the center, and as you see, we get that really nice glitchy disengage on the left side. Now, the, this blitz works really well the faster player that you have in that position. So I did want to go back to the depth chart for just a minute and talk about how to optimize that blitzing position. So when we go back to the depth chart, if we just look at this, again, I talked about how nickel three through cub is not exactly three, three. They categorize it as four down lineman. Notice here that I cannot put a linebacker in this position. I can only put a defensive end. So that is why, you know, you could put um, Chase Young, who on the Super Bowl theme team is a little faster 
than George Karloftis and still get really good pressure. So, you know, kind of show you what I'm talking about here. And you'll see. Again, all I'm trying to do is just kind of like basically disguise that center. And, and, and a lot of times it'll come from the linebacker, but it doesn't come from the, from the defensive end, okay? But in general, you know, this is my – you know, kind of favorite way, I think the best way to run it. You do want to, in my opinion, be down here a little bit. If you're back here, I find it, it's easier for the splits to get picked up. You get down here, now they have to pick you up, and you see how see how fast it can come in. It's a really good blitz. Now, the other thing that makes this blitz really good is the fact that 3-3 Cup has always done a really good job against a blocked running back. So, like, if they block a running back against this four-down lineman, notice that the running back's going to run to the middle – and you're still going to be able to get this pressure. So the other thing is true is let's say, okay, well, let's say they block a tight end. They block a tight end here, and we still are getting a pretty decent pressure. And honestly, if they block a tight end, what from my experience, most of the time this blitz can still come in on this left side. And we're only sending four people, guys. We're only sending four people here, and a lot of times you're getting that every single time, okay? Especially in game, uh, pretty much for the last – Ever Madden blitzes have worked a little bit differently in practice mode than in game for the most part. Conceptually, they're the, they're the same, but in terms of level of effectiveness, oftentimes in game is a little bit better for proof of concept on a blitz. Okay, so how do they actually block this blitz well? Well, I did, to show this, I wanted to go over a flip bunch and also notice with this defense that because you are man aligned, you don't have to flip. Your nickel corner is going to travel, uh, which I think is really good. So if I was to shift to the left and I was to stand. Now, what I would really recommend here is I would still I would stand on the side of the running back because we're ultimately just trying to mess with the running back here. So in this case, we're going to send four and we're going to try to still get this pressure off this left side. And you see we're able to because, again, we're trying to basically take the running back and the center that's the main that's the main issue uh, that this is going to give us. So let's say that they audibled to trips, right? We know trips is a really good running formation. So what we want to do defensively is we really want to stand more so over here so that we can shoot the run and and then we can also kind of play the pass. Another thing that's important to think about when you're defending trips is how you're going to defend the tight end corner route, right? Are you going to play, you know, cover two to that side? Are you going to play cover three cloud to that side, right? Um, there's some different ways to defend this, but ultimately you're going to almost always take this linebacker and put him in a zone. So you don't really, you want this to come in sending four, and what you'll see here is it does. It comes in sending four, and they're going to have to block somebody to pick this up. So we have a really good blitz, and what's really important to understand is you have the, free f the full flexibility to be able to move your user around for this defense. So you don't have to stand on this left side. You don't have to stand on the right side with this defense. You can stand on either side. Now, let's say they block the running back. You know, let's kind of go back over this right here. So how would I want to manipulate the running back here? Well, now I'd want to drag him to the right. I just want to kind of manipulate the running back on either side. And then the best way to pick this blitz up that I've seen, um, and this doesn't always work, it's basically having the tight end over there and then, um, and then basically blocking him. So if they block the tight end here on the left side, sometimes he still loops around. But as you see, that's going to pick this up the majority of the time. So you, at that point, what I would do, honestly, is just drop coverage because this is a really good coverage defense too. And that's what takes us to kind of our coverage setups and how to defend the most popular formations in the game. So I don't care what formation you're playing. If it is bunch, if it is trips, if it is tight, if it is U trips, any three wide receiver set, this is a really good defense. I think what's important real quick to touch on is where we're not necessarily as optimized, like in a five wide type of scenario. Now, this defense does do really good against five wide, but the alignment's not perfect. So what we can't do is you'll see here, see how we're, we're lined up here with normal coverage shells. We would shade our coverage underneath. The problem with five wide is basically the tight end. So you have a couple of choices here. This actually aligns about as perfectly as you can. And what we're able to do here is we can just man this guy up onto this tight end. And then we can basically play a coverage like this. But notice on the left side, we're still misaligned. Okay, we're not able to press on that left side. So what I would do is just try to drop, um, try to drop this defender into a, a third. 
okay? And essentially, we're just going to send this four-man blitz, and we know this is probably, I think at this point in the year, the best four-man blitz in the game. Okay. So if I was defending five wide, basically what I'm trying to say is you just wouldn't shade underneath, okay? That's your big tip for defending five wide. I would love, you know, like a cross man in a cloud or, or something like this, you know, like, you know, you're trying to take away kind of that glitchy running back. For some reason, when you're man aligned, it does this. Now, just for kicks and giggles, a um, little live labbing here, let's try to defend this formation with a default alignment. And you see we get that same basic thing. The only way we don't get that, as you can see here, is if we, if we base a line. Now, while that's really good for that running back on that left side, this leaves us problematics or problems over on this side. So in general, my advice would just be don't shade underneath when you're outflanked like that in a five wide situation. Or let's go over this just real briefly here. Let's say like a spread set. If you're playing a spread set, as you see, we're outflanked to the right side, which is typically what's going to happen. So what you want to do is take that linebacker whom you can man up on receivers and man him up on that receiver. Now you're able to press everybody so you can go ahead and shade underneath and then you can put your safeties in outside thirds. This is my base coverage. Shade inside, shade underneath, and then put the safeties in those thirds uh, with the new package that we talked about. And this is going to bag 99.9% .9 of offenses. It's really hard to beat this defense. Another thing that's important to talk about before we get to kind of the nuts and bolts of like the main adjustments for the main formations you will see is this new hotness, which is basically under center run game, under center rollout glitching. 3-3 Cub was really kind of found, I would say, in terms of its main rise to the meta late in the Madden 20 season because it was a really good run defense. When you are playing somebody that is using these under center rollouts, I really would advise you to utilize a zero yard curl flat. And then I think also really important here, you might want to go back on default with your packages. You could try to just run it like this though as well. So what the zero yard purple is going to do in the purpose of this is on the right side here. It's going to give us different adjustments with that free safety one and uh, one thing I didn't also say with the free safety one package. It's going to give us different adjustments with our with our uh, defensive linemen. So you can put them in purples. Uh, these two defensive linemen here. You can even put yeah. So the only person you can't do is this this guy right here. So. What I'm trying to get at here is you just put both defensive tackles. Um, I call them defensive tackles, right? They're technically defensive ends, and they're technically not, but whatever. Put these two guys right here in curl flat zones, okay? So they're in zero yard purples, and then you're going to contain. What I would do is I would shift my defensive line uh, to the side I think they're rolling out on. Now, if they could roll out both sides, which this formation certainly can do that, then I would shift to the side opposite nickel corner. So like in this case here, I'd shift left and then I would go ahead and I would still crash out before I did that. You know, so it looks, it looks kind of like, kind of like this right here. Um, let me, let me show that one more uh, time. My, my blood saying on the defensive end for some reason is not working. Let me do that. There we go. We get that purple. That's what we want. So what this is going to do is let's say they do run the ball. This is one of the best ways to shoot the under center runs. You can just shoot in there with your user. We've known this since men 20, men 21, men 22. It's been true for a very long time. This is a very good run defense. Now, let's say you don't know where they're going. You can 100%. Um, you can go with a defense of coverage uh, essentially like this. So what this is going to do is this is not going to blow runs up as you see, but you're going to be able to kind of contain the run. But what this will do a really good job of, and it's a little hard to show in practice mode, is this is going to do a really good job. And I would really advise spreading the linebackers, maybe pinching the defensive line. Um, this is going to do a really good job of stopping the rollout. So just to try to illustrate here, I am going to set up a rollout play. You know, and you see here, see how the contain stops me. Now, to go to do, I do want to show you in replay kind of what's going on. Now, I'm not, 
I don't roll out a bunch, so I don't know exactly how they're doing. I think they double team that defensive end. But basically, you're going to try to glitch this contain. Um, this contain is going to be harder to glitch because you're able to spread your linebackers. But then let's say, let's just say hypothetically, let's say that he did glitch this contain. We have the zero yard purple jetting out to the flat. And then what we would do is if he rolled out, we would click the right joystick that would then send him at the quarterback and he would be able to uh, take away that rollout. Now, all we have to do basically from this is stop the bubble screen, which we pretty much already do. And this is why for this formation here, just because stretch is such a popular uh, run, I would probably do a defense that looks like this because I feel like I can shoot the stretch really well here. And uh, if they do go with like this bubble screen, you see that this plays really good bubble screen defense. In fact, that purple might even intercept it. So you don't really have to worry about the bubble screen. You're able to stop, uh, and, and you're also simultaneously able to stop the other route. Now, I do happen to have the Colts playbook up here, so I did want to also quickly cover another problem that uh, we see a lot with man-to-man -man based defenses is RPOs. So let's say they're running trips on you, and they're running this RPO to the left. If you look out here to the left side, um, you see how that R icon is going to, he's going to blitz to the, he's going to blitz. You can um, kind of stand out here if you want to. But honestly, what I would do if I was trying to take away this RPO, for the most part, I think you're going to be okay uh, because they'll come right off the, sh they will typically uh, just essentially break the, break the deal. But another thing you want to do is if you're playing this and they're going to this a lot, what I would do is I would take that safety on the left side and I would man him, cross man him to that outside player and then I would cloud flat and then pass commit. And what this is gonna do here is, as you see, now you have four over three. So you just have a numbers advantage. That's an easy way to defend it. Another thing that I didn't say uh, yet is contain and pass commit. So by doing the contain and the pass commit, these contains will actually, they can actually pick that off. They have potential to do that. And then one last thing I will say uh, that I do think, you know, in case you're really desperate trying to stop these RPOs, uh, just bring this guy down uh, over the top here. So what this does is if you look at the computer, you see how it changes the pitch defender. So it changes who that P icon is. The reason that's important is because now that uh, guy over the top of circle is not going to blitz. He's going to stay with him. And then as you see, we now have a really good chance to defend this. So this is a great formation for defending all of that cheesy stuff. And it's also really good for defending the meta. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what this can do for you against the best formations in the game and my main setups for the formations that you are probably going to see that are more meta and more top level competition. So my favorite way to run this, I think this defense is literally the best bunch defense in the game. It's hard to, for me to find a better bunch defense right now. I just think it's super good. So the way that we're going to set this up, and if, they're, if you're not having to worry too much about RPOs, if you're not having to worry too much about that, which you shouldn't be in a man-based defense, if you're not worrying about under center rollouts, then you can turn those zero yard purples off, and that's going to really help. So everything's on default, our zone coverage is on match, and then we are in man alignment. So what we're going to do is my base setup for this is we're going to do what I call a roll coverage. We're going to man lock the bunch side and we're going to roll the solo side. So the way this is going to work is your user is going to user the running back if he goes to, well, really if he goes out on the route, okay? But the blitz is going to normally mean they're going to have to block the running back. So if I press here, and then from the press, what I like to suggest to people is a simple shade inside underneath. Uh, shading inside and then shading underneath is going to stop things like crossers, post routes, stuff like that. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to shift our defensive line to the left and crash them outside. From there, you have two choices that you can do, and they're, they're, they're both effective. So if you think they are going to put the running back on a route, what I like to do is I like to leave this safety on the left side in man coverage on the running back, and we're going to put the solo side in a third. These matching thirds are really good because they will never get beat on a press, 
And if the running back does block, I'll show you what happens. But we're also going to put that safety on the right in, a, in an outside third to the right. This is, we can do this because of the packages that I talked about in the beginning of the little guide. And then we're going to man up the, man up the tight end uh, with that blitzing linebacker on the right side. Okay, so why is this coverage really good? It's really good because if you're shading inside and underneath, and that means the only routes that are going to be able to beat you in your man coverage is outbreaking patterns like corner routes. But we have this outside third to the right-hand side to be able to counter that. The outside third is going to do a really good job. A lot of people are running their bunch to the short side of the field. or to I'm sorry, they're running their bunch with their three receivers to the wide side of the field. And so because of that, the outside third will play corner routes much, much, much better. Now let's say that they do block their running back so that they can block this blitz. I want you to watch the safety on the left side of the screen. You're going to notice that he is going to roll right into a middle third defender. So take a look here at the replay. As we look at this replay, you're going to notice that once the safety identifies that this running back is blocking, and by the way, this is a four-man blitz, and the running back did not block it, but the running back is blocking. This guy is going into the middle of the field, so he's going to basically be a middle third defender the majority of the time, and the times that he is not a middle third defender, he is going to be guarding the running back, so let's say that they do put the running back on a route, and we do the same exact adjustments. So now what they're going to do is they're going to try to quick throw the running back, maybe put him on a wheel route, and then on the left side, maybe they try to go to the skinny post, right? This would be a good combo, but you need time for this combo to work, which they don't have, okay? And then, you know, what else do you run in behind it? Maybe a drag, you know, maybe a, maybe a, a double corner uh, to the right side, which neither will get open in time. So where's my user responsible for here? Well, once I see that that running back goes to the left side, I'm going to trust that, that I have that third and I have that man up over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all my attention back into the middle of the field and I'm going to become the middle third defender. So if they do throw a post like you saw right there, did actually have time to get open, then I need to get back there. So let me show you how this works. And also I want you to watch the shaded down man on the running back, which is super important because a lot of people don't think you could play man on the running back. The shaded down man coverage is going to play pretty decent. Yeah, they might be able to throw that early for a couple yards, but then the weakness of the man coverage is typically the wheel route will be able to get over top. But the reason it won't is because we have this third over the top bracketing that. And then at this point right here, I know my responsibility is here. So uh, let's take a look at my user and kind of what I decided to do here. So I kind of ran down, I assessed the routes, and I know my responsibility is the middle of the field short to deep so I see okay the drag got bagged the corner route right on the right is open but that third is going to be closing down on that and that linebacker is a universal coverage linebacker as well one thing you can do to help that is shade you can individually shade that tight and outside I'll cover that in a minute uh, but anyway you see here I see okay he has a post I got to get back to that post route because if I don't this is a touchdown if they have time all right so that's just important Okay, so I did want to cover the manually shading part or individually shading players. So if we go back to this kind of basic shell here, our default shade is inside underneath. This is really good for the majority of things you're going to face, but it's not great for the, the routes that people are going to use to beat you specifically from the tight end position because they're probably going to be using the tight end on a corner. So the way you bag a tight end corner is you're going to individually, so you're going to hit Y or triangle, X or A, depending on your console, and then you're going to hit the icon of the tight end, which for us is the X button, and we are going to flick the right stick to the right or flick the right stick to the left, depending on the side. So if the tight end's on the right, we're going to flick it to the right. If the tight end's on the left, we're going to flick it to the, re the, the left. And so now you see we have this coverage shell. So what this is going to do is it is going to give us a better chance at stopping this route combination right here. So now we see, in this case, the running back's going to run across the middle of the field. So what I need to do as a user is I need to kind of start here, go back down, and you see we play pretty good defense. Now another thing that you're starting to hopefully see here is that sometimes this tight end can, um, you know, kind of manipulate this guy pretty well. So the biggest thing that I would say is if you're ever starting to get manipulated a lot, 
just don't shade underneath. So you can just play the press man. If they're starting to really beat your coverage, just play the press man defense and don't shade underneath. The reason that this could be helpful is because now the tight end won't miss a, or the, the linebacker won't miss that press. You'll see there, and now he's, stick to, he's stuck to him like glue right there. Another thing you could do that I think is really worth uh, touching on here, um, just kind of based on what we have to work with. So we go back to those individual shading adjustments. So here I'm going to shade inside underneath, but I'm going to I'm going to tweak how we're going to play the tight end. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shade that tight end, and instead of just shading him outside, we're also going to back off. Now notice that that did not back off the linebacker. It technically backed this guy off, which is not a problem, uh, and he doesn't back off a ton. So there is a little bit of a tell. But now what you'll see is that that linebacker won't get burned as bad if you were to do that, okay? Another thing you can do, and we talked about this in our adjustments, one of my favorite things to do is to mix in a zone coverage shell off of a coverage look that looks exactly the same as a man coverage shell. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to press shift left. Now, when we want to play coverage, we want to crash our defensive line inside. The reason we want to do this is because it's going to be better for the run and we're going to get better sheds. We know we're going to play run defense, so that's the reason we're doing this. And we're going to create one of my favorite coverages, which is a roll coverage where we're going to go third to the solo guy, middle third to the safety, outside third to that outside guy. And then we are going to go with a cloud flat on that outside player. And then what I like to do is with this with this um, linebacker, put him in a vertical hook on the right, and on the left side, we're going to put him in a curl flat. This covered shell right here is really good because you have that slot manned up. That slot is the main player in this offense. Now, let's say you're running this defense and you would rather have the tight end manned up. Well, we can just man up the tight end with the linebacker and we can vert hook that, uh, that slot corner. And it can look something like this but it's, it's essentially muscle memory. So you can create a cover three cloud out of this defense and they might be planning to try to put man beaters on the field and those man beaters might not do a good job of beating zone. Now you can also blitz from this shell. The biggest thing is you need to use the running back if he goes on a route. So the way you would blitz from this shell is you would basically do everything we just showed you. Now what I would recommend here is actually go ahead and hard flat um, on that right side or if you're not going to hard flat make sure you have the tight end manned up because we don't want to give them an easy tight end flat route for a first down and then as you can see right here what this is going to do is if they do send the running back out the blitz is going to scream and you just have to use the running back for a split second okay so that is what I like to do whenever somebody is running with their bunch to the right now I wanted to spend a few minutes just touching on what I like to do if someone is flipping their bunch or if they're flipping it at the line of scrimmage. How do you adjust uh, to someone doing that? Because that is something that has been popular in Madden for a very long time. So the way I like to defend this version of bunch, because it is different, because now look, our linebacker's over here, and so it's just different adjustments. I still think you shift left, crash out, and then you're gonna stand on the running back side though. So this time we're standing here, if I want to shoot the run, for example, you see this is a pretty easy gap shoot. And this is also why secure tackle is really helpful to have on your user for stopping these running backs. But the other thing that I like to do here is now we can't, you know, now how we're going to blitz from this look. Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. One of the things that we can do is we could, in theory, crash uh, this direction and then use that linebacker uh, or that DN in coverage. You could do that, and this blitz does come in. That's perfectly fine. So if you want to run the defense basically exactly the same flipped, be my guess, that will work for you. But the other thing that I like to do here is when I, if I want to send it, if I want to be in this kind of shift here, this allows us to create more roll coverages that are really good. So the first thing I like to do is play zone. Um, I like to use that cover three that we just talked about. And as you'll see here, this is going to be really good because now we can just send four and this cover three cloud is going to, it's going to be really good. So I love to mix in this little send four against that look. 
Now, we did also talk about how one of the best ways to block the blitz was to block this tight end. So let's say that they do block this tight end. If we were to run it, if we were to run the blitz this way, right, and we were to send four, let's see how this works. I don't think this picks us up. You see, we're able to get the blitz in. So it might wholesale just be better to shift to the running back side every single time. If you want to do that, you certainly can. But regardless, the point is you can shift either way and be effective. So if I want to shift to the left, this also opens up the ability for me to play what I love to play, which is super, uh, super aggressive shade down man. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to crash our line down. This is a coverage defense. We're going to man up the defensive lineman on the tight end. We're going to man up the linebacker on the running back. And then we're going to put both of these safeties here in outside thirds. And we're going to shade inside and underneath. So now everybody is manned up on the field. And my responsibility is to be a deep middle third or mid read defender. So I'm not worried about anything going to the outside. I am 100% looking at like double posts. That's what I'm looking for every time. If they run something like that, I'm going to have pretty good user on that. I'm not letting them throw anything over the middle. I'm going to force them to throw everything to the outside of me, which is super, super important. So there's your, those are two main methods uh, to dealing with flip bunch. Honestly, this is a really good method right here uh, because this pressure is going to get – you're still going to get really good pressure either way. But those are some different tips and tricks that I would use for defending this. Now, one other thing I didn't get to yet – is, you know, let's say you're giving them this look right here. You can, if you want to, you can do something like this, um, you know, and then just man the running back up. This is perfectly fine. Uh, the, the safety on the left side, you're going to have to be a little bit more weary of the tight end here. Uh, if you'll sh I'll show you here with this double post. So what happens is the safety struggles to get out there on double post, so they'll quick throw that flat. That's where you'll just kind of mix in occasionally a hard flat over there. Another thing that I like to do, if you want to get really adjusty on people, uh, what you can do is you can hard flat this outside guy. You're going to man up the uh, safety on the left side on the outside bunch player, and then you're going to cross man the tight end with the safety. Or, remember, and, and, and you can't do this with the linebacker, unfortunately, and then you're just going to go with a, a cover three shell on that right side. This is another really easy method that's super good and people will literally throw you picks because they'll just assume that that's open and you can play zone because these guys have reinforcement universal coverages. They have the KOs, even though they are better for man coverage than zone coverage. With that in mind, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about what I like to do whenever somebody audibles into bunch strong nasty and to show this, I'll just be, I'll actually audible to it, and the reason I will audible to it is so that I can show kind of what it's going to look like. Uh, and this also goes for Bunch Strong Offset because they're very similar formations. And I will throw Dagger in here as well. So let's say, you know, they come out and they audible to the RPO. So they audible to the RPO. Honestly, this is not too bad. This is going to be pretty decent stock defense against RPO. And what is the best way to pick up this blitz? Really to put the tight end on the blitz side. So we're just going to shift away from the tight end, crash out. And what you'll see here is this allows us to put this linebacker in man coverage on the tight end. This is very similar, hopefully you're seeing, to the bunch defense. And then we could do something like, honestly, this right here. This is a perfectly good uh, defense for what they're going to do. And if we take a look at this RPO, you're going to notice that this is going to get played the majority of the time. So not a whole lot to worry about from the RPO side of things here. You know, I will say this RPO is better than the RPO at a Jets. And the reason, again, is because of the P, to the, the P icon over that slot corner. So uh, and also you see we're a little bit misaligned, unfortunately. So a couple things we can do here. But I think the easiest thing is just slide this guy out. And by just sliding this guy out, it literally will stop the RPO every single time. They'll never be able to throw it. So if you want to just bag the RPO, that's the best way to do it. Now, when you play Colts, what are they going to run from this formation? The main plays you're going to need to watch out for because you're playing more of a man-based defense, you're going to need to be able to watch out for this wide trail play. And the reason why this wide trail play is really good is because this post is going to do a good job of beating man. And what a lot of people like to do is a route combo that looks like this. So this route combo is really good, but 
we have the capability to man up with this linebacker. And also in this formation, it's not as big of a threat, if you think about it. A tight end flat is not as big of a threat as a tight end drag is going to be. So anyways, we're going to man this guy up with the, the linebacker. And then what I like to do here is honestly very similar to what I was doing in bunch and running a coverage that looks like this. The reason I like this coverage is because it's really hard to throw. If the running back goes to the right, it's really hard to throw him. I can go user that. Um, I feel, in my opinion, in my experience with this, stopping the running backs really hard out of this formation. So I would rather just user him, honestly. Now, ultimately, you can't just user somebody, right? You can't just be like, okay, I'm going to user it. But in this case, you'll see this is done to do a really good job because you don't have to worry about the post because you have those thirds. Now, another thing that I like to do against Bunch Strong Nasty that I do think is really important as we take a look at the play dagger is when they start to go to kind of more of like the running back streak stuff, I think this is a really good setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this running back cross man. And if he stays in to block, the safety will be an extra defender in his own. But really, we're just going to put this uh, left side player on the outside third. This is much better for Bunch Strong Offset. Okay, it's, it's truly much better for Bunch Strong Offset than Bunch Strong Nasty because in Bunch Strong Nasty, um, you don't get the press that, that you would want. Okay, but what you're able to do here is you're able to cross man this tight end and you're able really importantly to put this outside third to that right side. The reason you want that outside third to that bunch side is that will allow you to shade inside and underneath. And what this is going to do is it's going to stop all the corner routes to that side. And really on this left side, if you wanted to, you do have bottleneck. You could just play man-to-man -man press on him. Um, and you could even play a defense where, you know, you're putting the two safeties. And I'll cover that in just a minute. But I want to show you this cross man on, on uh, Durham. See how he play he he plays the running back pretty well. So the cross man is an option for you as well. And then when we're talking about like defending some of the other stuff that they can do from this formation, don't ever be afraid to mix in the cover three cloud. This this formation in general is really not equipped. It's not well equipped to defeat cover three cloud. So a simple coverage shell like like um, like this right here is going to be really good. And if you want to blitz from this, what I would recommend doing is just drop a three rec and a vert hook. And then you can, you can cut, you can cut underneath of this stuff. If you wanted to, uh, you could do that. Or if you wanted to, you could just simply man up the slot because he's the big problem on most of the routes and then have a vertical hook. So now all you have to do is user the, basically uses the tight end across on dagger because uh, you see here the man up's taking that away and then I'm just working from there back to the tight end and we're sending a lot of pressure while we're doing this. Another thing you can do real quick, uh, let's say you are playing, you know, bunch strong, more bunch strong offset. You're getting a lot more Durham. Uh, what you could do here is you could cloud this left side guy, which means you would want to roll the coverage like this. And um, this is going to be really, really effective specifically for your ability to take this, you know, basically coverage and go something like this. Uh, so as you notice here, I put the slot corner in an outside third in this. This is a bunch strong thing. You can't do it again unless you're playing a uh, bunch strong. Like you can't do it against bunch, but you can do this against bunch strong. What this is going to do is you're still going to maintain a lot of integrity in your coverage, but you're going to be able to defend double corner well you're going to be able to defend durham well as you see we're getting a lot of reroutes this is a really good coverage for what most people are going to be doing out of bunch strong also to put matters super simple uh another really good defense for bunch strong offset not so much bunch strong nasty but bunch strong offset would be to basically just do this right here and then essentially you know from this look go ahead and play uh, a cross man onto the running back and a man up on the tight end. This would be perfectly fine. Uh, this defense would be a very good defense to, to use. One of the things that you're also maybe not noticing here 
is that this defensive end has a lot of different adjustments when you audible. For some reason, he can now be cross-manned on anybody on the field on the right side, but he can't be manned up on the solo receiver. So also, you always want to kind of look at that. Like the defensive lineman can be manned up on all kinds of different players because of the free safety one inside package. So anyway, just something little uh, about this. But in general, the, the thing that's going to give this the most trouble is really this coverage shell right here, uh, which which I think, you know, super good. And, and, and like I said, if you wanted to, I mean, if you wanted to leave that slot man up and then have a vert hook, this gives a lot of people trouble. In this formation, this defense right here with the man up on the slot, allowing you to kind of sit in the middle of the field, this is going to do a lot of damage for you. And then if you want to blitz, uh, you can do something like this, which is the opposite. But why this is good is you can take this middle read. So you see I have a mid read here. I can shade him underneath. Like I would also shade that vert hook underneath. And then I'm able now to play a defense like this, which is going to be really good. Or I could, you know, send send the linebacker on a vert hook. But, but what this is going to do, the, the shaded down mid read, if you watch against like a Durham, or I'm sorry, a dagger, watch this shaded down mid read, just absolutely go crazy in the middle of the field. It's going to lurk. It's like a, it's like a deeper three rec, but it's going to lurk a lot of that underneath middle stuff that a lot of people like to throw. So that is bunch strong nasty. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking and touching on what happens when somebody audibles into trips and specifically kind of some of the RPO stuff. And then also as well, we'll take a look at just some basic coverages that are really good for trips tight end. So this goes for trips tight end offset. This goes for trips tight end regular. Um, this is kind of my mainstay trips deep. So if they go to this RPO, uh, also notice I don't have to flip. I don't have to do anything. The man line is going to do everything for me. And you're going to get this alignment right here. Now, I would press. Uh, I would also, in terms of where do we want our defensive line to be shifted to, I would shift to the trip side, again, just way from the tight end, crash out. And then, first and foremost, I want to show you the, the uh, blitz and make sure that that works. So you see here we get that nice five-man rush. And then you can also get a four-man rush, and then we'll talk about the RPOs, and then we'll talk about the plays. So the four-man rush would just mean manning this linebacker up. And you see here, we're able to get that four-man rush. The four-man rush is honestly just every bit as good as a five-man rush, and I don't, I, I don't send five very often. The five-man blitz is really more for contain purposes or pocket purposes, pocket, pocket degradation purposes than for actual true pressure. Uh, also, so to shoot the run in this RPO, uh, we'll just call this. It's a fairly simple shoot. They're not going to run the ball much on you out of trips because you're able to shoot most of them. And because we're sending four most of the time, you can actually put your user in a zone, which doesn't sound like it would do much, but it actually matters. And the reason why this matters is because the targeting of the offensive line will change and you can kind of hide behind this guy. Now, if you do get picked up, you see how that guy's coming free off the end. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, let's take a look at the RPO side of things here. So a lot of people like to throw this. When it's manned up like this, that's a really hard throw. Uh, it's really your three over two. You should have a person free to just make a tackle. Uh, but I will, I will go ahead and blind throw it, and we'll take a look at just what happens. And then we'll also talk a little bit about kind of what to do about it. So... I think just as simple as like pass committing against trips. Pass committing against trips is really good for the play action plays. And if they throw that, you see there you have a KO. I mean, doesn't even catch it. So you don't have to do a lot to stop the trip stuff from the regular trips. You have to do more to stop it from the other trips, but which we've covered in the beginning. So what I like to do to stop this version of trips is I love to utilize thirds. Uh, hopefully you're catching on to a theme here, but my favorite way to defend this trips formation is really just a simple defense that looks like this. And the reason I like to play zone on the right side is because this will take away the snap throw to the running back. If, you, if they don't put the running back on a route a lot, man the tight end up. Man the tight end up. Another thing you can do that's really underrated is you can bluff blitz this linebacker. Actually, you can't. I forgot because of the free safety zone package. But man him up on the tight end. This, this stops the majority of things that people want to do from trips. 
Uh, this is a really good trips D, and they have to block the running back to block the blitz. So how does this fare against the RPO? You see, it does just fine. So pretty much every way you slice it, you're going to be fine against an RPO. Another defense that I like for trips that a lot of people kind of stopped running, but is actually still really good, especially when you run the defense like this, is remember we're in the free safety one inside package. So what we can do is we can take this safety that is on the trip side and we can put him in a third to the other side of the field. So we're going to put him outside third, but we're going to put that outside third to the right. And then what this is going to allow us to do from a coverage perspective is we can now create a scissor concept and we have everybody manned up and then we have this third to the right. Now this third to the right is going to do a really good job of stopping crossers, corners, all that stuff. You'll see here, here's a corner and you see we play it pretty, pretty good. Now if you were to ask me how would I shade trips tight end because we've shaded pretty much everything else. The one thing I would say against trips because you're dealing with a tight end I would be careful how much you shade underneath, okay? I really would. But in general, I would shade the tight end outside and everybody else inside. So what does that mean? We're going to globally shade inside, right? And then we put our, our adjustments out there like so. Oops, do that. And then we're going to individually shade the tight end outside, which in this case is shading him to the right. What this does is it will help us defend the best route they have, which is the tight end corner against man. So my lurk, how's my lurk on a route combo like this? Well, I'm going to jump the corner early, and then I'm going to come back to the running back, and then you see there we have pretty much everything else backed. Another really popular trips tight end combo this year, I actually need to go ahead and set that in the audibles, is the play X under. And for our purposes, we'll just come out in this play because I've kind of shown, you know, what it looks like from the audible perspective. They do audible to trips. So X under. And the reason that people are calling this play, actually, I think it's PA crossers now that I think about it. Um, it's PA crossers. And there's really a couple reasons why you would run these plays. The first one is the bomb play on cover three, which this is why most people, if they are audibly into trips, this is what they're going to call 90% of the time or the RPO. So this is the play we have to be prepared for. So what we're gonna do is those same adjustments that I just showed you. And again, we're shading inside, but then we're gonna individually shade the tight end outside. We have this outside third, but it's a cross outside third. So what you're gonna see here is that this cross, number one, the pressure is gonna come in. But if you look at the replay, just, just you can kind of see how this is gonna go. Tight end corner is not really there. I'm able to use her that pretty well because there's nothing coming underneath quick that's going to threaten me. And then my user, if you look here backside, I, I do have to take this drag. Okay, I do have to take this drag, but that crosser is never going to get open on triangle against this man up. Okay, so another thing that I do think is really important to mention is that when you play trip side in, you need to be pass committing. And the reason why is because Trips tight end has a lot of play action plays. If they call play action and you are pass committing, you are not pass committing. Sometimes you will not get good coverage on this solo wide receiver on a fade. And this will be something that people will try to do. Okay. Now we have that covered up. We have all that stuff done. And so now what we're going to be taking a look at is what are they going to, what are some other popular trips tight end route combos that they're going to go to? And really the main other one that we need to be prepared for is really this one right here, slant post. How do you defend slant post with this? And honestly, you're going to be okay. Um, and the reason why is because we shade it inside, and this is where I really like to utilize the curl flat and the roll coverage. The reason this is so good is because now we have a middle of the third defender to take away the post. We're able to kind of take the slant early and then get back to that tight end, right? We're essentially taking the tight end. If, the, if they run slant post, we take tight end. Another thing you can do, let's say they're running a lot of slant posts, but they're not, um, you know, they're running it like so. What I would do is throw a vert hook on the field. The reason I would throw a vert hook on the field is because against slant post, if there's no flat to the left, which there's often not, this vert hook will play 
that slant, and then you could put all your energy into the post. So I, those are the, really the main ways that I would defend trips. Another way that you can defend trips that a lot of people kind of sleep on that I, I do think is worth mentioning a little bit here, it's a little hard to kind of get into from this alignment, but you can get into it. Um, it's essentially taking the safety on the left, putting him in a third, put this guy in a cloud. The linebacker, unfortunately, he can't really get where we want him to get. So what I like to do is man him up on the tight end. We're going to put ourselves on an island here, so we need to be prepared to take the tight end to the corner. But this coverage right here is very effective against trips tight end as well. And the reason why this is so good is because you have a lot of help on that left-hand side for corner routes. If they're running a lot of corner routes um, or things like that, they ha you have a lot of help over there. But in general, you should be rolling your coverage. And then if we ever wanted this to look like man but play zone, uh, this is a really good coverage shell to rock, something like so. And then what I would do is I would always have triangle manned up for the most part. But if you wanted in this instance to not have him manned up, what I would do is vert hook the slot and hard flat this defender on the left. So what this does is it really covers the left side well, and then you have this you know, simple defense on the right. This is a very good cover show as well. Against trips, you always want to be sending probably at least four because the weakness is it's not going to be very good for blocking this blitz. So those are some of my favorite ways in which I defend trips tight end. Okay, so now I wanted to go over tight. And the reason I wanted to talk about tight is because when you run a man-based scheme, they're ultimately going to return to man-beating formations and the best man-beating man formation in Madden over the last three years has been gun tight. Gun tight, halfback weak, gun tight slots. It's very similar. And um, this, is gonna, this is how we're going to defend it. So... Generally speaking, it's going to look like this. It could be flip-flopped, and all you're going to do is shift away from the tight end. So the blitz here, shift away from the tight end. You're going to stand right here, and oftentimes this blitz is going to screen. Okay? So the shift away from the tight end is really going to help a lot. That's what It's really what makes this, this blitz the best blitz in the game right now is the fact that you can basically just shift away from the tight end, and it's really hard for them to pick it up because if they block their tight end, it just doesn't really pick up. It doesn't really do anything for them. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is what are the main route combinations that they're going to call, um, that they're going to call, whoops, didn't mean to do that. One sec. Okay, we're back. So what are the main formations, what are the main routes that they're going to call? So the biggest thing that you need to watch for in, in any man coverage scheme is the running back, which is why sending four is so good because they won't be able to just wear out the running back. What I really like to do against this formation, and it seems like a very simple defense, but I think it's a very effective defense here, is we're going to man up the tight end. And then on that right-hand side, what we're going to do is we are just going to take that safety, put him in that outside third to the right, and we're going to basically roll the coverage like so. Now, the reason I like this coverage is it's a very safe coverage, and you can do different things with it. So, like, if you wanted to, you could do this, and then you just use the tight end. This is also a very good coverage as well. The unfortunate reality with tight is you can't really – the unfortunate reality with tight is that you can't really um, utilize a ton of match uh, against this formation. I am going to show you a match defense that I like. but in so, so, again, what's the combos? You're going to see something like this shallow cross – where they're going to go with a running back Texas route, and they're going to try to block the blitz like this. Okay, this is a pretty standard combo. So if you think about what am I going to have to use? Well, the post is going to get guarded by that third and that man up. So the main thing you're responsible for is the running back. So you're coming down like this. You see, oh, running back ran on route. I got to go guard him. And everything else pretty much bagged up. Another route combination that you're going to see is post wheel drag, where they'll block the running back to try to pick up the pressure, and they might go to something like this. So this defense is going to do really good against that as well. And this specific one is where we're going to be, again, the same thing. Shade inside, individually shade the tight end out is going to really help. And then if you want to utilize thirds, you certainly can. Now, for illustration purposes, I'm going to spy 
the pass rush, but no, the pass rush is a factor. And, and we just think about like where our user is going to need to go as we kind of watch this play out. But as you see here, the tight end corner, the tight end corner is the route that can attack you and can beat you, which is why we have Chuck Howley with universal coverage covering him and we're shading outside. But this is the best route that they have. And as you see here, um, it did a really good job. Now, if we come back side, they basically have nothing. This post is kind of open here, but it's running into coverage. Like, I'm not too worried about that. And my user can go get that. So one of my favorite things to do is when somebody audibles to tight and they're trying to set up a man beater, I'm going to call zone. So the best way to call zone against tight is to roll from wide side to short side. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go third, 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 cloud. We're going to leave that man up on that slot. And then we're just going to purple this guy. This right here is going to stop the majority of tight users because you have these zone coverages now. It looks exactly like man, everything the same. But let's go back to that tight end corner, which they just, they just hit us with. Now you're trying to throw that into a third and a cloud, and it's just not going to happen with the KOs, right? So you're going to be able to play that. So one of the easiest ways to counter that would be to do that. Now, another thing you could do that I actually really like, because again, we know that the tight end corner is the main method in which they can hurt us. So what we're going to do now is we are going to um, essentially put a cloud over there with that outside corner, and then we're going to take this linebacker and we're going to man him up on the tight end. And we're going to take this guy and man him up on circle like so, and we're going to basically play man coverage across the board with a cloud to that side, and we're sending five, or sending four. So kind of back to that corner route, which, again, this is what they're going to do. You see here, now the cloud is able to play it, and it's going to be hard to hit that. So just by simply putting one zone over there, you take away that, and it's hard. They're not going to have a lot of other things because your user is able to take everything else they're going to have. Your user is able to take the post. The corner around on the left side is not going to really be there because he's getting jammed. You know, so that's how you can kind of play really good defense against a gun tight. You know, another thing just in terms of, of tight is you can run man on one side, zone on the other side. So one of my favorite things to do would be something like this here. This is a pretty good coverage shell because, again, they can't put their running back on a route. If they put their running back on a route, they get screamed at. So they put their running back on a route here while well, they're getting screamed at, and I'm able to lurk underneath and take everything underneath. So all in all, I don't find – ultimately, people are going to go to tight because tight is the best man-beating formation. But in general, they're not going to have a lot if you're practicing some of these principles of zoning off occasionally or you know, utilizing some vertical hooks. And I, wanted to, I did want to touch on the vertical hooks. So – the thing about the vertical hooks is if we talk about tight slots, a little different, but we're just going to go street corner flat to both sides. I did want to touch on this with the vertical hooks. So vertical hooks are one of the best zones in the game against two by two sets. So we're going to put the right side guy on a vert. We're going to put the slot corner on a vert. And they're going to go two cloud flats and two outside thirds just for our purposes right here. Okay. And I just want you to watch the vertical hooks. So what happens is these vert hooks can match the corners, as you saw right there. So the vertical hooks can do a really good job of matching number two to the corner. So another thing that we can do <laughs> um, in terms of our adjustments, right? Corner routes are going to be giving us a problem. Well, let's just take that right side linebacker, put him in a vert hook. Because again, as you're, and I, I hope you're seeing what I'm trying to point out, the main way they're going to hurt you is corner routes to the tight end. So by having, you know, a vert hook that matches him or a KO ability, that right there is not going to be as big of a problem. If that is open, that's a problem because it pulls your user out of the middle of the field. You want to be able to sit in the middle. So the best way to counter that would be to play something like this. And if you wanted to play more of a coverage variation of this, let's just throw this guy in a purple. This is a perfectly fine coverage as well. And the reason this is good is because, and why we would call this over the other way, we'd call this because they're running tight end corners all the time. If they're running a lot of tight end corners, this is going to take it away because you have the cloud. The vertical hook oftentimes will match to him. I don't know why he's not doing that right now, but he will oftentimes match to that tight end corner. 
So those are some methods uh, to defending Ty. Ultimately, you certainly feel free to run this version of the defense with a shade underneath as well. This is this is still good. Um, the the where this breaks down is the tight end corner, right? The tight end corner can break this down, so you need to be prepared for that, right? And maybe even just running at him at first and letting that guy kind of keep up to him. But you see there, if that if and and that's another thing. They, if you were using outside thirds, it really it really eliminates that that corner route from being so prominent, so prevalent. So that's how I would defend kind of the tight stuff that ultimately I guarantee you that you will see. So to use this defense in the red zone is going to require some adjustments, but ultimately this is still a really good defense in the red zone because it stops the run so well as we know. So. From a coverage, let's say they let's say they come out in any passing set, like let's say it's bunch trips doesn't matter. We're gonna go into once we kind of get down here, we're gonna turn off this free safety inside. We're gonna go back to regular three three cub, and we're gonna go back to just standard Mike Blitz zero. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to set up our coverage, shade underneath, and then purple our safeties. So we're still gonna blitz the same. So shift away from the tight end. Right, and then we're going to be able to shoot the run as well. So, like, if they run the ball, we're able to typically shoot in there, okay, typically. Again, it's a little easier to shoot the running game than in practice mode. Now, for the blitz, um, let's say they go with, like, a random route combo, right? But we know that this blitz is it's a really good blitz, right? But we're going to play more coverage in, in, in the red zone or in the goal line. So, what we're going to do is we're still, you can still crash out. You can still feel, feel free to crash out. You can crash, you can really crash however you want. Um, but ultimately what I like to do is, I do like to send four occasionally too, but we're gonna man up the tight end, we're gonna shade inside, underneath, and then you are going to put both of these guys in curl flats and you're gonna use the running back. So if the running back goes on a route, you're gonna use her him, which a lot of times it's gonna be this Texas route. So you're just going to do this, get back to the running back, blitz comes in, and you're just simply sitting over the middle waiting for the running back. This is so good. If they pass the ball inside the five, they should not complete it because your blitz is super, super good. I would pass commit, and then if they do run, you're able just to dive tackle and shoot the gap, okay? You are going to need to kind of like get used to the gap sheets, of course. But let's say you don't want to have to worry about that. Go ahead and man this guy up on the running back, man this guy up on the tight end, shade in the shade underneath, and then purple both these outside guys. This also, you know, you can still stop the run from that, and you're going to be able to stop the pass as well. Let me go to one of the most meta setups that everybody uses every year to try to score down here. Right, something like this setup right here. They might put the running back on a ghost. They might block him. A lot of different things they could do. But in general, this is going to be what they're going to do. So with trips tied in is a little bit different because I don't have um, I don't have a, a direct line uh, to doing this. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll just leave the, the the running back cross man. Honestly, I think it's the easiest thing. So we'll just man this guy up on the tight end, cross man the running back, right, and then we're going to shade in, shade underneath, and then purple these guys. And honestly, could certainly just bl uh, blitz the, the left side guy, right? But in general, let's look at the combo. There's really nothing available. You're just kind of sitting in the middle like a quarterback, sky, uh, quarterback spy and a three red hook defender. So those are my main methods for defending the pass inside the five. Now, when we get to, like, the single back stuff, the biggest thing that I could tell you here, again, kind of going back to that video we did on this already, if you don't have zero yard purples, um, and as you see here when I go to this, the, the adjustments, they are not the same. So I can put them to the right, but I can't put them to the left. So just put this guy in a hard flat, and if they run the ball, you should be able to just shoot this, as you see, and I can just kind of run it down. But honestly... The biggest thing, I mean, this is perfectly fine. I mean, you, you'll be fine right here. Just throw this kind of flat. If they roll left, you're going to have to go get it. 
you know, but this is also fine because you have the, because when you get compressed down here, man coverage typically is king. One thing I would say is blitz that corner off the right side there. So we're going to leave the, the running back unguarded and just contain. The contains are what's going to keep him in the pocket. You're shooting the run. This is honestly a fine defense. I wouldn't really stress out about, about it. If they go to a heavier running set, which they probably will, what you ultimately will get down here is they'll go to wing tight. They'll put a fullback out here, and they'll run. They'll basically run all the runs in the book. Let me get the uh, jet sweep here. If I can find it, jet sweep. There we go. So they'll run all the runs in the book at you, right? 3-3 three, three cup to me is fine for this. Um, as far as, like, where do I – what I would do is I'd bring this guy – I'd definitely bring this guy down in the box. For some reason, he froze. But I'd bring this guy down in the box. I would probably advise shifting my D-line to the left, crashing out, and then containing. So you see this is what it looks like. Because if they, jet, if, they, if they stretch you, you can shoot it. And you have it kind of – you have it kind of contained to both sides. But the main thing you have to worry about in this formation is really not the stretch. It's really the jet sweep. So what I would do to stop this, I would bring this guy down in the box, and I would kind of sit here. I'd definitely send five, and I'd definitely put my user in a zone so that they can't – you know, you can man him up to the running back too. And then by manning him up to the running back, I find this to be very helpful for shooting the run. Anyways, if they go jet sweep here, essentially all you're going to do – is you're just going to see I can kind of shoot right down the middle. And then I also have the ability to contain on the back side of the run. So that's how I would stop it. And then ultimately, if they go down to goal line, I don't feel like goal line is that good this year. But I would just shift to honestly, you can just shift the shift left, stand here, and essentially just shoot the gap. Um, another thing that you might need to do though is if they're starting to come out in this a lot, and this is kind of like you're noticing, oh, this isn't working right. You can go to this defense because this is like when they come out in this, they're, they're pretty much saying we're going to run the ball. So you can kind of go through here. You don't have to leave these off, but just go to goal line 6'2", 60 out jacks, and you're just going to pinch your D-line, spread your linebackers, QB contain. What I would also do is walk this guy out, and then I would click over here. Basically walk your flat defenders out, and then just use her the weak side guy. So like here would be this guy. And now if they run stretch at you, you see here, you're going to be fine. And then this formation is really hard to run goal line against. It's really hard to run QB sneak because we pinched, we crap, you know what I mean? So we're in a pretty good spot. And then like I said, I would just move this guy out. And then I would move, you know, basically move these guys out. And then you, you have these guys to kind of click on. So like let's say you think they're going to run left. You can always just click here. And now it's super easy to shoot it. So that's another little pro tip for using this defense inside of the 10. If you guys want to see gameplays on this, they're on my channel uh, as far as this defense goes. But thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this breakdown and really are still here, you're going to love our school community page. It's only $10. It gets you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks for both Madden and for college football. So if you're looking to get better at either game, the best place to do that is at our school.com community page. The link to sign up for that is in the description below.